Hey, beating friends. It's Kristen here with a new episode of Free Spirit Beating on the Softlex Company YouTube channel. Hope everyone is doing well today. We have something different. We are going to do um, an ode to Dr. Seuss. So today is March 9th and um, last week I was on here, I shared with you guys that it was Dr. Seuss's birthday and we had a design kit we put together here at softlexcompany.com that was an ode to Dr. Seuss. Hi Robin, hi Kathy. Um, that design kit has since sold out, but we do still have the Whimsical Betastical Trio on sale at softlexcompany.com and it comes with a 10 foot spool of our white, red coral, and tanzanite color beading wire, the medium 0.019 beading wire. And if you add that to your cart and then also add the Whimsical Betastical Bead Mix, which we still have for sale, online as well, you will get the beads, the bead mix, 50% off. Pretty sweet deal, hi Lee. And that is good until tomorrow, March 10th, 2020, at midnight Pacific time. Um, so, for those of you that don't know Dr. Seuss, he's an American author, and he's best known for books such as Cat in the Hat, The Lorax, Grinch, uh, one fish, two fish, um, all sorts of things. But today we are going to paint ourselves a adorable little cat in the hat bead pendant. And then we'll use the beads from the whimsical betastical bead mix and the wire from the trios to make a simple necklace. So excited, Kathy says, yeah. Um, for those of you that watched Sarah, I think it was last week, last Wednesday, um, she challenged me to paint something on this matte onyx bead that you guys got in your Whimsical Betastical Bead Kit. Um, this was just a really nice size bead. It has a beautiful, soft matte finish so it took paint really well and I've been really enjoying seeing what everyone makes with this in the VIB group um, the Softlex company VIB Facebook group uh, tons of really awesome designers in there and I've been seeing you guys wire wrap it I've been seeing you decoupage it I've been seeing all sorts of fun stuff um, going on with this bead and we are going to paint it now, for those of you that got the bead kit, you will have this one large um, bead that was in there. But like I said, the Whimsical Betastical bead kits are sold out. Uh, however, if you wanna do something similar, we do have a bunch of matte onyx online at softlexcompany.com for you to just purchase. So I have this strand here, and these are super cool how they overlap like this. They are the overlapping squares, and they're also matte onyx. Um, and that is what I did my examples on. So this little guy is on that square. So you can always pick up those. There's ovals, squares, cubes, rectangles, all sorts of different shapes. Hi, Lydia. Um, so if you like what I'm doing and you didn't get the kit, don't fret, you can still purchase some matte onyx beads and you can make something similar on your own um, with those. All right, let's see what else. Um, I talked about the design kit, the Whimsical Betastical Trios and Bead Mixes sale. And that is good until tomorrow, no coupon needed. Um, just add the, both of them to your cart and you will see the discount. We do have another deal going on. Spend $55, get a free strand of the Painted Sunflowers uh, bead strand. But when I, when I hopped on before the video, I believe there was only one or two of these left. So um, they, may be, they may be gone by now, but if they're not, this is a gorgeous strand. And this matches our new kit painted sunflowers. You can still get the painted sunflowers design kit online and I think there's about 10 left of those. So they're going quickly as well. Um, 
getting down to the nitty gritty. And as always, US orders ship free over uh, $50. You have that option at checkout. And if you're an international customer, you can email us at info at softflexcompany.com and we will let you know um, of some discounts we have for international to help offset the shipping rates. All right, let's get going. I'm excited. So I'll switch you down to the V desk and you'll see we've got all sorts of different materials here today. Hi, Fern, welcome. So these are the two examples that I played with to see how this works. This one, I put a varnish on with Mod Podge and this one I didn't. Um, so you see the difference in the finish on the mat versus the glossy here. And I did wait for this to dry and then I kind of um, wet them and see if I could rub some of the paint off and you can. So you are gonna want to seal it in some way. You're gonna want to either varnish it with something like this, Mod Podge, or any other kind of varnish that would be good for paint, I'm sure would work too. They are so cute. <laughs> so, so cute. So I did those guys on these little, on these big, I shouldn't say little, on these big squares here. Um, this was a full, I guess we call it a half strand. It came with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these squares. So you can make seven pendants basically out of this um, if you wanted to paint on all of them. Really, really cool. So what did I use? I'm, I got a little base started here um, for the video, but this is what I use to paint with. And I'm sure you can use regular acrylic paint as well, but I love these paint pens. Um, Sharpie sells a paint pen that would probably work too. These are called Posca, P-O-S-C-A, and they you can buy them individually or you can buy them in sets. Um, they are the 1.8 to 2.5 millimeter size, and they're just dreamy. They are wonderful paint pens. I love this brand. Um, I use these a lot, and they worked really well. So you'll see here, as of right now, I just have the black of the bead, and then I use some white to sketch out the shape of our cat in the hat. I also have a ultra fine point Sharpie marker, permanent marker, and I have this micro perm marker, also an ultra fine point. These are very similar. Um, I just grabbed them both because sometimes one starts to get a little dry when you're writing on top of paint. One of the things you do wanna make sure is that your paint that you're gonna draw on top of is totally dry before you start adding one of these markers because if it's not dry, it's just really not gonna write. It's gonna mess up the tip of your marker. Um, so that is another reason why I got started on the base here. Kathy says, I love to color and I have a set of the Posca. They are fantastic. I also have this guy is one of my favorites. It's a Uniball Signo pen and it is a white gel pen. I am not able to find this one in person locally, um, or at least I haven't yet. So I do buy this usually online on Amazon. And it's just a really nice white gel pen. So if you want something that um, is smaller tipped than your Posca, then you can come back and do some detail work with this. We may not need it, but I always usually have that around just in case. It's just so you see the difference, this is the tip on the Posca that I'm using. So it's pretty large. And then lastly, I have the Mod Podge here, and that will be to put the varnish on top. So we're gonna do our pendant first, and then we will string our beads. So let's get this guy done. 
And I have a little picture of Cat in the Hat by Dr. Seuss here at my desk to look at. We've done his little, his outline of his face and I just put his little nose in there. So now we'll do the eyes. <laughs> and the little eyeballs which are actually kind of like little u-shapes in there with these kind of pens you'll find you want to hold it up and down um, a little more than tilted normally you write with a pen tilted and I find when you do that with these markers, it just doesn't write as clearly. So you want to kind of pick your marker up straight up and down a little bit more. Look at how, how cute he is. <laughs> All right, so Cat in the Hat, now that I've got his bases there, you can see that they, he's got a lot of little, little black lines and sketches off to the side. So we wanna add in some of those. And that gives him a little more depth. We want to color in a little bit on his ear. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> and now I think we're ready to bring in some color. We do have to add his whiskers still, but I want to add the background color first. So I'm going to give these a little shake. And then I'm just gonna color in the background. And you'll notice here, I left like a black line around him. So I didn't take my paint all the way up to my drawing. I'm, I left a little, a little space there. And I, I like how this paint kinda puddles around and isn't totally opaque. I think it gives the, the piece a little more depth. But if you use like a craft acrylic paint or something, if you want it to be flatter, you can totally do that. Or you can come back with a second coat of the paint pen. Sarah says, I hope you will do some other versions after this, like a floral design. I love the idea of dressing them up. Well, now that I have five more um, in my stash here, I am thinking I will do one with the painted sunflowers kit. We do have so many shapes and sizes. Like I said, we've got cubes and rectangles and ovals and squares. <laughs> That will be fun, I know. I think that'll be awesome. Kathy says that really makes him pop. I lose you guys, are you still there? I had a phone call come in. Sorry, I forgot to put it on, do not disturb. Hopefully that didn't knock me off. Bounced right back, okay, yeah. I think it, YouTube is usually really good about that, so. Okay, great. So now that I've got my blue background, I'm gonna start adding some red lines in his hat. And 
and I didn't do his little bow tie yet, so we wanna add in his red bow tie. Just like that. Now I'll need to let the bow tie dry a little bit and then I'll come back with black on top. Let me just feel the blue. I think I can go ahead with his whiskers. And he's got a little, a little, a little line for his nose here. He's got two whiskers there and then two whiskers coming out over here. And lastly, I'm just gonna add some details for his, for his bow tie, but I think I need to let the red dry a little bit more. Super cute. I don't have a lot of patience though when I paint. which is why I like to paint with acrylics because my patience always runs out. So what's your favorite Dr. Seuss book? One that you grew up with or maybe your grandkids love? Wacky Wednesday, says Thomas. Hop on pop. Kathy says green eggs and ham. I have never heard of Wacky Wednesday. Thomas mentioned that last week and I was like, what? What is that? <laughs> go dog, go. For Lee, Robin says the Grinch. So many, oh my gosh, there's just so many. Sarah needs to pick up some new books. Yeah. Well, I think I think my thin little markers got mad at me, so I'm gonna try and come in with this guy. Sometimes I, I went a little too soon, but that's all right. There we go. That sounds like a must for your grandson. Which one, the Wacky Wednesday? It sounds like that one would be fun. All right, so then once your paint is dry, you can come back in. And these dry really fast. If you're using um, a different acrylic paint, you might have to wait a little bit more time to get to this part, but these paint markers dry really quickly. So once your paint is dry, Sam I Am. Oh, that's the one I haven't heard in a while. And then you just cover the whole thing. It It's gonna go on um, with a white kind of creamy coat, but it will dry clear.
So we'll put this guy aside for a second and let that dry while we check out our beads. And it'll eventually dry nice and crisp like that one. Yeah, my kids are a little old for them now too, and I'm not, they don't have kids of their own yet. Thank goodness, that'll be a while. But I do have a sweet little nephew who is in kindergarten and he would still love some of these books. Amber says, I wish I could paint like that. You know, Amber, it's just a lot of practice. <laughs> um, I've been painting since I was a little kid and I, I learned to draw actually with cartoons and with coloring books. And so I think I started when I was about, oh, maybe like eight. So I've been practicing for many, many, many years. But I think there's a lot of other ways you could do this. Mod Podge is really good for decoupaging. So if you wanted to cut out a picture and put it on here, you would use this as the glue, as the base, and then you could also use this on top as your, um, as your finish on top. So that would be another way of utilizing putting a picture on here without having to draw it or paint it. Um, and then another thing you could do is try doing uh, a transfer where you would um, cut out the picture the same size as your as your pendant then you would outline in say a charcoal or a, or a dark pencil give it like a dark outline and see if you can transpose it on there so that could be another option I'm sure there's lots of videos on how to do, how to transpose a drawing to, um, to a piece. And that would give you a base to at least have something to start with before you get going with painting. Oh, he's already starting to dry a little bit, just a little bit tacky. Or a stencil, yeah, Robin says, totally a stencil. Yeah, if you're not trying to draw something like this and you just wanna do, say, flowers, there's a million flower stencils out there, um, things like that, you can buy a little stencil and use that to add your paint to it. So lots of ways to get creative and make it your own and paint um, without having to have the drawing skills right off the bat. All right, so here's all of our beads. They do match my nails today. That's fun. I pulled out all of the beads that were red and silver and black and this sort of um, aqua color, but we do still have a lot more beads in the mix. So you would get all of these uh, in addition to all of these, which are, have all the yellow and tanzanite and there's some pinks and oranges in there. Uh, so really, really nice mix. I'm obviously gonna get a whole necklace out of here and have quite a bit left over. Um, and I actually used some of these in my earrings last week too. So um, <laughs> I love that your nails match. That was not on purpose, but that worked out really well. <laughs> so I'll put these aside because I'm not gonna use these colors today, but that is in the mix. I am gonna use these colors and I'm thinking I'm gonna string it on white. What do you guys think? It's such a pretty trio. So this is Softlex Beading Wire Medium 0.019. It's our all-purpose beading wire. It's super flexible and um, work, we use this you know, 99% of the time, this particular diameter. And it comes in white, red, and tanzanite in three 10-foot size spools. So you can buy this pack on its own or you can buy this pack and then you can add in the bead mix and get the bead mix for 50% off up until tomorrow at midnight. Sarah's gonna check and see how many mixes we have left. That's a good idea. That is a great idea. Ooh, so I don't feel like the tanzanite goes with this particular colorway since I left the tanzanite beads out. So I'm gonna move that one aside. And 
Only around 17. All right, cool. So we're getting down to the nitty gritty on the bead mixes. So I've got white and red, and then they are gone forever. They are, once the bead mix is gone, um, it's just a limited time offer. We only have it uh, until they sell out, and then they're gone forever. I'm leaning towards the white. I might be able to use both but I do worry that it might not go through some of these beads, but that might be okay. Maybe I should try both. So I'm just gonna cut a nice amount. of white wire and of red and see if we can do a double. Grab some bead stoppers. I will place that on one end I don't usually, I don't always work on a bead board, but since I didn't quite know where I was going with this one to start with, I decided to bring it out today. And you just clamp your little bead stopper on your wires here and that will hold your beads in place. Now I know I want this guy to be the centerpiece and I'm probably, and the hole runs top to bottom. So I could even start with him. Lee says I like bead boards. They are nice. They do make things helpful. So if I were to do something like that, I would need to cut two more strands to go in the other direction and let some little strands hang down here. So I think what I'll do is just cut this, these two long strands in half. And that'll give me four strands two white and two red. And they all fit down through my onyx. I'm not sure what I wanna do at the bottom yet, so I think I'll just put a bead stopper down here and then separate out one red and one white going in each direction. Now I could put a little bead here as sort of an anchor. I think that guy is too big. I kind of like that shape in that position. I love when you guys help me bead. <laughs> So feel free, feel free to make a suggestion. <laughs> Should I make this guy here? Or the silver one? Fern thinks the silver one. I wonder. I'm just trying something real fast and see, I don't even know if it'll work, but. No, it didn't work. All right, so we got one vote for the silver one. So let me grab all four. It'll have to be a pretty decent size hole to get through all four of these. 
Kathy says silver too. And that worked out. Okay, so now we'll need something to start here at the bottom. And I think I'll start with this black bead. Maybe I'll put the black on the white on each side. And then I'll try this aqua on the red on each side. And then I think I'll grab something else to go on two strands again, maybe this larger spacer would kind of corral them together. So that's what's fun when you're using two wires is you can't always get all the beads through both wires and that's when you can play with letting the wires go one at a time and then having like another bead kind of corral them together and then you'll get the little color of the wire popping out. And what do I have next here? Do we think that this will go through too? Let's see. I think these black and white tassels are perfect for, doc, for the cat in the hat. They went through both. And I think I've, I have two more left, so I'm thinking maybe we'll add two tassels at the bottom. We'll save those two for the bottom. Now let's add in this red bead. This is definitely a whimsical, beadtastical design. <laughs> it's definitely like, let's just see what happens. Sarah says, I'm so tempted to figure out how I can have kinder kids draw on a bead for a project. You can. I did do an art project with Hudson's class where we used the Sharpie paint pens, but I think he was a little older. I think he was third grade, but they aren't difficult to use, so I have a feeling they would be good. Now I'm going to do another... Hmm, I want to do this bead somewhere. Maybe I should try this one. I know this will only fit on one strand. It is a statement piece. Yeah, if you are a teacher or work with little kids, I mean, this would be so fun to wear um, when you're talking about Dr. Seuss books, or you're celebrating his birthday. I definitely saw some people um, all dressed up at my son's old school on Facebook. They had posted some pictures for Dr. Seuss's birthday. Yeah, it would be great for 4th of July too. A librarian totally a bookseller oh Sarah you you're good at figuring out all the different people <laughs> that would work Becky says a good way to get pendants for my jewelry making projects yeah a great way to create your own look at this this is fun Great way to have your own self-expression um, come out in your beadwork. 
to be able to create the your own pendants to go along with it too. All right, so where do I go next here? We've got two more of these drops. We've got these larger, these larger guys. I'm gonna put this one aside since we used that one already. We've got these. It is really fun. So what's next, guys? Should I do another teardrop maybe and then go to the larger beads? Yes, yeah, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah goes, I wish I would have had you, Kristen, make one for each kit. Oh my gosh, I would have been making pendants for days. <laughs> days and days and days oh fern says the necklace is telling the story of the book i love that maybe we'll have to do something special on a smaller run <laughs> sarah where i can paint <laughs> some beads <laughs> If you love this project, be sure to click to like this video before you head out. It does really help. Um, and if you're new here, be sure to subscribe. Yes, a mini kit. So maybe I could do something where it's a mini kit. Not quite as many as our, <laughs> as our full kits. <laughs> what did I just set myself up for? <laughs> I don't know if this one will go down both. And share if possible. Thanks, Kathy. That's always helpful. You offered everyone heard it. <laughs> I'm on camera. It's official. I offer pending details. <laughs> Pending the details. Ooh, this one might be a a one a one strander. Let's see how that will work. Uh, maybe I'll. Hmm. What do I have to put on this side? This bead cap now feels weird because it doesn't cover the bead. One, two. So now I need one more bead that'll fit through these both of these guys. I don't know, this might be too small. Or maybe not, maybe I can just crimp them together here. Kind of go like that and add my crimp. I think that would work. All right, let's add a bead stopper here. and do the same on this side. I love these big beads. These are, I think, my favorite from the mix. Every design I see where people have used these big beads, I'm like, ah, I love it. So obviously this bead seems to have my heart. <laughs> I did, I know I've got another black one, there you go. Lisa's mine too. Yeah, I think that bead is so fun. And it could be like elegant, it could be fun and whimsical, it could go both ways. It's really a cool bead. It could be all by itself and like a statement.
All right, I will hold on to these bead caps for something else. And then I've got these two little tassels that I think I wanna add at the bottom. But we can go ahead and crimp. What are we thinking here? I think I can go ahead and crimp. Let me move this out of my way a little bit. So we can see it on the white background. All right, I'm gonna grab two two by two millimeter crimp tubes. And I'm gonna slide them down both wires and then crimp, crimp them in place here. And I think I'll leave a little bit of space just so you can see the beads kind of floating around. I use my magical crimping pliers. These crimping pliers take the two by two millimeter tube, crimp tube, and turn it into a nice little round bead. They only work with the two by two millimeter crimp tubes. It sits right in the center of this notch and you give it a good squeeze. It'll pinch your four corners. It'll turn it on its side 90 degrees, put it back in the notch give it a squeeze again, and then I will kind of pump and squeeze a few times around. And now that is nice and secure. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. And just make sure I'm getting close to, yeah, where the other one was. Again, place your crimp tube in the center, give it a good squeeze, turn it on its side, give it a squeeze again. And you've got your finished little crimp. I think I'll leave both wires going up the back. You could even play with twisting them. Just kind of twist them all the way around like that. Or you could leave them straight. I think twisting them, just give them a little fuller body, kind of gives you a look like a candy cane effect, which is cute for this design. It kind of looks like one of those red twine. And I'm just going back and forth like this, like twisting, twisting the wire. Lisa's I like his hat. They really are a game changer, the magical crimping pliers. I love them so much. I bought three pairs and I gifted a pair. I mean, they really are just so special. <laughs> they really are. I'm gonna put a bead stopper here. And I'm gonna twist up the other side. And these are the little mini bead stoppers. We have two sizes. We've got a big bead stopper and a mini. And Softlex has these exclusive little grip tips so they allow you to grip them a little bit more nicely and it brings a little color to your bead stopper. So they make it a little easier to find because sometimes these guys can get lost in the mix. And when you've got them like a bright color, it makes it a little easier to find them in your, <laughs> in your desk, especially when 
you're like me and as you start beating, things just sort of compile all around you. Kathy says, once you get the hang of them, you're like, how did I survive without them? It's so true. I used to be the angry beater. I'm not the angry beater anymore since bead stoppers have been invented. And that difference is I used to drop my beads all the time. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna take my attention down here for a second before I finish off the top and just add these. Oh, thanks for um, mentioning that. Sarah just shared the link for Alicia Beautiful Nights. She made a really awesome design with our Whimsical Beatastical kit. We just saw it right before I went on video and I dropped it in the email. So those of you that get Softflex Company emails, there'll be a link to it in there as well. I'm trying to figure out if I wanna do two strands or leave one kind of floating. If you don't get Softlex Company emails and you want to, you can go to softlexcompany.com, scroll down to the bottom on the right-hand side, there's a spot to enter your email address. And we always send out sales, new products, new videos. We give you a heads up when we're going live um, for our tutorials and our live bead sales and all of that stuff. Kathy was watching her before the live started. Cool, yeah, she made a really, I haven't watched the video yet, I just saw the finished design and was like blown away. And I think she went ahead and wire wrapped her Onyx pendant. I think I'm gonna add, what I'll do down here is add the little tassel to the white and then just leave a little of the red wire hanging so that we don't lose that color. Let me get in here. There we go. So I'm just crimping this tassel on the white strand and then trimming away and then I'm gonna do the same with this other white strand and will this pull I wonder if that will pull free or if I have to add a crimp down here. I guess I'll wait and see. I'm excited to go watch Beautiful Nights video after this because I know I was like, whoa, when I saw the finished design, I'm excited to see how she did it. Sarah says she does such a nice job. Yeah, she really does. It's great fun to see different perspectives and see what other people do with these kits. I think that is the most fun of all is that everyone gets the same beads to work with and then there's just so many different ways to approach it. So I was wondering if this would pull free. I think it will. So what I'm gonna do, cause I do like these little wires sticking out here, is I gotta figure out a way. Maybe I'll just crimp them together at the top here. Softlex crimp tubes are double the wall thickness of most on the market and they're seamless. 
Um, they're really high quality. They make such a difference when you're working with a quality crimp. And a lot of times when people say they struggle with crimping or they have difficult, um, they, you know, they have difficult time crimping, a big part of that is making sure you're using crimping pliers and making sure that you're using a good quality crimp. Both those things together make all the difference. Okay, so what I ended up doing was I just added a crimp um, for those little red bead, red tassels, so that that didn't pull back out of my pendant. And I wanna pull this one guy up closer. Whoa, sorry, I was off screen. <laughs> Cute. Cute, cute, cute. I might even see if I have something else I can put on these, these two little stragglers after the video. And lastly, we're gonna add our clasp. So let me just pick this up and see where this is. Oh, it's actually kind of long and I think I like the length on it. I'll measure where we're at. So from bead stopper all the way down to pendant, we are at 11 on each side. So that's like a 22 inch necklace. Now you can obviously make this shorter if you want to, but I think because the beads and the pendant are kind of large, it feels good to me to be a little bit longer. I'm gonna take one of my twisted sides, I'm gonna add the crimp tubes down the two wires and I'm gonna pick one I think I'll pick the white to slide on my lobster claw clasp and go down through the crimp tube to make that loop and I did that because these crimps fit three wires nicely so two going up and then one going back down and then I'll trim off the excess if you haven't checked out our closeout section, we added a ton of findings there and a bunch of lobster clasps some head pins and eye pins and jump rings and all sorts of stuff that are 30% off. Um, as we kind of clear out some space, we wanna bring in some new items in that section. And so, um, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot in there. So I've got my clasp on one side. And then I'm gonna do on the other side, I'm just gonna create a loop for my clasp to go into. So I'm gonna string. Oh, easier said than done. There we go. I'm just gonna measure out my strand, making sure that I'm putting my crimp in approximately the same place. And then I'm gonna grab one of the white strands back down through the crimp like I did on the other side. And this side I'm just making a loop. And this will be a loop for my clasp to connect to. You can also do like a closed jump ring or a split ring or something like that here um, if you wanted to. You can loop it onto there or you can just let the wire be.
be your closure. Make sure you can pull that one free before you trim it. Get real close. And then what you do is you can just connect right onto there. All right, we are done. Look at this cutie. We've got our little tassels down there, fun little whimsy here, and then the little candy cane kind of design up the back. So cute. And now I have these little guys I gotta figure out what to do with too, my little smaller samples that were on the square. The twisted wire is perfect. Love it, Kathy says, Fern says adorable, Robin love it. Yeah, the twisted wire was a last minute decision, but it just seemed like it fit this particular design wonderfully. I'm gonna put it on. Well, you probably won't see it, so maybe I'll just hold it up. Flip you guys back around. Earrings with the littles. Oh, that would be so cute. <laughs> So there we are. Match me. I've got the red shirt, the blue nails. I'm totally matching today. <laughs> I didn't even realize. Thank you guys. So remember to go grab the trio, get your bead mix 50% off and I was gonna see where our what videos we have coming up for you this week. Um, let me check. Love it, love it. I'm gonna have to find a cute librarian to give this to. <laughs> One of my good friends is actually an elementary school librarian. She was dressed up as um, thing one and thing two for <laughs> Dr. Seuss's uh, birthday last week it was really cute all right we only down to a few mixes left so make sure to grab those soon the sale ends tomorrow at midnight and we've got what's today so we've got a video with sarah on March 11th at 1 p.m. Pacific time on the Softflex Facebook page. She'll be doing a live jewelry making demonstration over there. And then on Thursday, March 12th at 2 p.m. Pacific time, we've got a new episode with James, Conversations in Wire. And then we've got, which I believe, then we've got um, Sarah again on Saturday at 8 a.m. Pacific time. She's gonna be over here on the YouTube channel doing a live premiere at 8 a.m. And Sarah said he made a new ring this week. Oh, I was wondering what James has been working on. The rings are always so popular. So I'm really excited to see um, what he's got in store for us on Thursday. And then I'll be back here next Monday, same time, 12 p.m. Pacific time, a craft wire ring. Yeah, he'll be using Softflex craft wire. We have like a, a, a rose ring right now here that you can find from James on the YouTube channel. And it is so popular. It's like one of our wildly popular videos. So if you haven't checked that one out, go check out that one and then stay tuned for a new ring on Thursday of this week. All right, guys, I will see you again next Monday. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe, give me a like, a thumbs up, that's always really helpful. Um, and I just love being able to come here and share these fun designs with you and, and beat along with you. I love your input and all that good stuff. Um, and if you are on Facebook, join our Facebook group, the Softflex VIB Studio Group. We've got like a few thousand designers in there now and it's growing every day. It's really fun to see what everyone's working on and how they all utilize the same stuff. Click on the little bell to get notifications for when we go live and um, have a great week. Make it be tastical. <laughs>
All right, see you guys on Monday. Bye.